<laughs> I want to take that coat off. My wife told me this morning that these shoes didn't look good for with a suit. What y'all think? <laughs> so I took the coat off and now I don't have a suit on. So. Uh, but I told Fleety, I said, James has got his cool shoes on too. Our message comes today from the book of Job, the 14th chapter. And I'll read just some selected verses out of this chapter, all of which are questions that Job asked when he was trying to understand what was going on with him. The first one is uh, verse 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. And verse 10, But man dieth and wasted away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? And verse 14, If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. Let's bow for prayer. Father, again, we're thankful this morning for your word and for this part that we've read. We pray, Lord, that you'd open our hearts and our minds to your word and to this message, Lord, that we might gain what you have for us in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. If Job lived in our day, he would be just like us. I think that uh, he would want to know why in the world do we have to have daylight savings time. Uh, he asked a lot of different questions. And of course, if you know the story of Job, he had a right to ask some questions to try to understand what was going on uh, in his life. Uh, we ask questions too. Have you ever asked yourself why do good people have to suffer? Have you ever asked your question about God's sovereignty? You know, God really has the last say about anything. I mean, God can do anything he wants to do and he doesn't have to answer to anybody else. And then that makes me think, is that fair? It don't matter whether it's fair or not. Whatever God says is. And then, so we might ask this question, do we even have the right to question the acts of God? A lot of questions come to our mind. And if you look through the book of Job from the beginning to the end, Job had a lot of questions. And I'm just going to share those three with you today. Um, now, let me tell you the story of Job in case you don't, are not familiar with it. Uh, it seems that the sons of God, the Bible says, came to have a meeting with God in heaven. And I assume that they are the angels of God because they're messengers for God. And they came to meet with God and Satan also came. And he came to accuse Job. And God asked him, have you consider Job that he's a good righteous man that he loves God and he hates sin 
have you considered Job? And uh, Satan, of course, responds by saying, well, I reckon Job is a good man. Look how you've blessed him. I mean, he's the richest man in the East. I mean, got everything that anybody could ever want. No wonder Job serves you. Take it all away. And he'll curse you to your face. And God says to Satan, go and touch everything he has, but don't touch him. And that leads us to ask another question. When things happen to people, is that because of the permissive will of God? Does God allow things to happen to us to test our faith? Like Satan tested Job's faith. So anyway, a little later, Job, uh, while his family, by the way, he had seven sons and three daughters, and while they were all at the eldest son's house having a party, um, one of the servants came in to Job, and he said to Job, all of the oxen, and the asses have been stolen and all of the servants have been killed and I'm the only one that escaped to come and tell you about it. And before he gotten that out of his mouth, another servant came and said, fire came down out of heaven and devoured all the sheep and all the servants and I alone have escaped to bring you this message. And by the time he got that out of his mouth, another servant came and said, all the camels have been stolen and more servants have been lost. And I'm the only one that escaped to tell you about it. And by the time he had finished telling Job about that, another servant came in and said, while your children were having a party and enjoying themselves at the elder son's house, a great storm came up and collapsed the house on them and all of your children and part of the servants died. And I escaped to tell you about it. Job's having a bad day, to say the least. And God allows these things to be done by Satan to test the faith of Job. <coughs> and then later on, when Job didn't do like Satan, Satan thought he would do, and he did not curse God or sin with his lips. He came back to meet with God. You know, Satan, the Bible tells us, is the accuser of the brethren. He accuses us before God. He brings things up. He even does it in our own mind, in our own heart from time to time, right? He accuses us and tries to turn us away from the Lord. So God asked Satan when he came back a second time, have you considered Job, my servant? And he said, I sure have. But skin for skin, a man will do anything to save his life. Touch his body, 
and he will curse you to his face. And God said, go and do what you will, but do not take his life. So Job was covered with great boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. He sat down in a pile of ashes and covered himself with sackcloth and prayed. Prayed that he might die. But he didn't die. And one of the questions Job came up with in the midst of all this was who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? You see, Job felt that he was unclean. There was the thought in that day and time, and there still is in our world in many places, that if you had any kind of disease and if you were suffering in any way, it's because you have sinned against God. And God is punishing you. So Job began in the course of this thing to think maybe he had done something wrong. He wasn't like he ought to be. So he focused on his problems. Now, Job had an overabundance of problems. As you can imagine, if anybody went through all that Job went through, he had an overabundance of problems, and there are a lot of people that like that. But a lot of times we focus on our problems. He dreads standing before God in the judgment. Because evidently he's done something really wrong and just doesn't realize it. But God's going to find it out when he stands before God. Who can make sinful people clean? Well, Jesus answered that question. He said, I can. I can cleanse you from every sin. Only problem was that Jesus hadn't come in Job's time. And Job didn't know this. But we can read in the scriptures today in the New Testament that Jesus made the woman at the well who was a morally unclean person clean. He cleansed her from her sin and turned her into an evangelist to tell others about Christ. He made the palsied man, you remember the story in the Bible of four men who brought a man that was crippled on a, on a stretcher to a house where Jesus was teaching and preaching and healing. And when they got there, the house was so full they couldn't get in. So they carried the man up to the roof of the house and they tore the tiles away and they let him down through the roof of the house to the feet of Jesus. And guess what Jesus said when he looked up and saw those four men who had enough faith to bring that man to Jesus. He looked down at the man and he said, Thy sins be forgiven thee. Well, Jesus, ain't you going to heal him? Yes, he is. He said to him a second time, he said, Rise up and walk. Take up thy bed and go home. 
And a man that came on that stretcher being carried by four other men carried his stretcher home with him that day. Jesus can make a clean person out of an unclean person. Look at what he did to Zacchaeus. Remember Zacchaeus climbed up in a tree because he was a short man and in the crowd he couldn't see Jesus and he wanted to see Jesus. So he climbed up in that tree. Zacchaeus was a crooked tax collector. And nobody liked Zacchaeus. But Jesus made him clean, made him pay back all of that that he had stolen from other people. And that day, according to Jesus, salvation came to that house. Jesus will make you clean if you trust him. And then Job's second question was, man gives up the ghost, and where is he? Man dies, and what then? Job is thinking about how short life is and how uncertain life is in light of the fact that his whole family, except for his wife, is gone. He compares himself to a flower that grows up in the morning and in the evening it's cut down and gone. Have you ever asked yourself the question, where do people go when they die? Well, Jesus answered that question for Job and he answered that question for you and me. Jesus said lost people go to hell. Now, we don't like to hear about that. But there's punishment for those that reject the Savior of the world. The unsaved. Jesus directed them to fear him that is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. So the lost people in the world, when they die, they go to hell. And Jesus gave us a glimpse of what that's like. In Luke chapter 16, when he tells the story of the rich man and Lazarus. But Jesus said, those that are saved go to heaven. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. If you're going to be where Jesus is, you're going to be in heaven. Because he went to heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Paul said, for me to die is gain. And when you think about the description in Revelation chapter 21 that the Bible gives us of heaven, I can see why Paul thought to die is gain. And he wrote, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There you go, Job. There's your answer. What happens to a man when he dies? 
Jesus made it very clear. Another question is from Job. If a man die, shall he live again? Job wants to know what happens to the body and the soul of a man. Is he going to live again? He thinks about the loss of all of his children. Children that he had made sacrifices for to God. He thinks about the storm that destroyed that home and killed all of his children. The wreckage of the home and, and the weeping and the sorrow and grief that came. Well, Job, here's what Jesus said. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That about settles that, don't it? Jesus promised resurrection. His resurrection, he says, guarantees ours. If we are a believer, if we're saved, how fortunate we are compared to Job when it comes to the promises of Jesus. You see, all that was in Job's future, sometime in the future. Those clear promises that Jesus made to us were unknown to Job. But if you go to chapter 19 in the book of Job, you see that Job is beginning by that point to understand some things. And he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth and again on the earth shall stand. How do he know that? God revealed that to Job in the course of all of his suffering. He has full confidence of the fact that the Lord is coming back one day. And when the Lord comes back, there's going to be a resurrection. And everyone who has died, who is a Christian, and has been buried, their body disposed of in some way, are going to come to life again. That's the resurrection in the last day of a person's body. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then when we which remain shall be caught up together with them, the dead in Christ, who have taken on a new body. Paul said in Rome, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. Isn't that going to be a wonderful thing? That we all get to go up together. Those that have passed on already and those of us that are still here. Jesus meets us where we are and helps us to have greater understanding of what he has in store. Now, Job had a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions. How many of you already know it all? 
We don't know it all. We got a lot of questions that are not answered. And the important thing is not to have all your questions answered, but to know the one who is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Well, to make a long story short, and I know I haven't done that, but <laughs> Job was faithful to God. And Job was restored by God. He was given more children. Evidently, his wife repented because she told him to curse God and die. But they had more children. And Job's wealth increased. God blessed him. And his last state was better than his first state. God blessed. So that's the lesson with Job. God can do anything to fulfill his promises that he's given to us today. Let's bow for prayer. Father, again, we're thankful for the blessings that you, we enjoy today. Thank you for everyone who's come to worship with us here today. We ask, Lord, your blessings upon them and their families. We just ask, Lord, uh, that you'd help us to understand not everything about you, but who you are, that you're God, and beside you, there's none else. Amen.